welcome back to my youtube channel if you guys are new to the channel be sure to click that subscribe button and turn on post notifications i would like to give a special thanks to south motors honda for giving me time with the 2022 honda ridgeline and this one is equipped with all wheel drive but let's talk about the exterior paint here honda calls this a platinum white exterior color it looks really good with the chrome and black accents let's talk about the exterior styling here i think the rich line does look aggressive looking at these headlight modules here they're an led projector headlight here with this incandescent uh, automatic high beam switch with this led daytime run light with this incandescent turn signal here at the lower part of the fascia and you do get led fault lights here and there's also front parking sensors and this area right here is functional to put an air curtain over the brakes and wheels looking at the grill here it looks even larger from the previous model that's also the honda emblem that does house the driver's assistance i want you guys to comment down below in the comment section and tell what you guys think about the exterior styling here of the honda ridgeline looking at the side proportions this has a 125.2 inch wheelbase with an overall length of 210.2 inches looking at these tires and wheels here these are a 245 60 firestone tire they're wrapped in this 18 inch rim design actually like the rim design finish here is like it's like an alloy finish this also has this five spoke rim design it looks really good here with the white exterior color and it does have cladding here so you basically can beat this vehicle up if you want to do some off-roading this has around 7.6 inches of ground clearance so pretty decent ground clearance but it's not best in class but looking at this mirror cab is an led side mark on the top honda just offers a standard side sunroof unfortunately there is no panoramic sunroof option here on the rich line for this current generation but making our way to the rear here as you guys can see this is a, around like a four and a half foot bed here looking at these taillights here they're an led combination which is an incandescent turn signal with an incandescent reverse light but the brake lights are an led there is the rich line badge there with the honda emblem there also with the all-wheel drive badge to signify that you do have all-wheel drive there is rear parking sensors that's also these large dual tip exhausts there's these seven pin connector down there and honda says you can tow up to 5,000 pounds here on the honda ridgeline this also has a multi-function tailgate just grab this it is hard of course when you guys try to let it down but it does have this composite bed material so it's really good so it will basically last for a very long time off to the side here there's this little uh cargo uh area here that you can put your wallet and whatnot in especially when you're off-roading you don't want to have your wallet wet there's some tie down hooks back here it's also incandescent lighting you can also open up this if you would like it does reveal a deep amount of storage in there and there's a temporary spare tire this is the only truck in the segment to offer that and my apologies it's actually an led light not an incandescent lighting i'm sure you guys the multi-function tailgate lift this back up here and reach underneath the all-wheel drive badge and there's a latch so now you can open up the bed back here so you can access this area right here a little bit better but you can access it either way but overall the rich line does have a really cool party trick when it comes to the actual tailgate but let's hop into the interior sitting inside the interior of the honda ridgeline looking at this cabin here so it is time for honda to basically redesign the ridgeline from the inside out but the cabin still looks very modern this is a seven inch display it does support apple carplay in android auto but reaching over here to shut the door of the honda ridgeline the door sounds very solid to start out the vehicle just put your foot on the brake and press the start stop button right here once you do that that v6 will come to life and looking here at the door panel material is going to be a nice soft touch ejection mode the plastic there is two person memory seats here with this chrome accented door handle there's a switch gear here feels really nice it is auto up auto down only for the driver and passengers but not for the rear windows there's your mirror controls here there's an eco button there's your parking sensors lane keep assist for collision warning also try to control your cargo lamp also your window defogger in for that um, outlet that's in the actual bed back there there's your fuel cap opener hood latches down there there's a manual parking brake and there's a lot of storage in here very large storage compartments here on the ridge line this area here is going to be nice and padded with very nice stitching the materials on the dash are going to be a nice soft touch ejection with the plastic like i mentioned this is a seven inch display and it does support apple carplay in android auto looking here the touch response is very snappy going into the google maps it does take up the whole entire screen there's these touch capacitive buttons here on the side it does have home menu back and also your bright button and there's a value knob here for 2020 i think honda took away the value button but they did bring it back for 2021 basically the wristline hasn't gotten any changes for 2022 that i noticed because i did film the 21 model uh, about a few months back there is three low heated seats here there's some storage here and my iphone 13 pro max does fit in the actual wireless phone charger and it does charge my phone at a really good rate 
There's a 12 volt here with a standard USB cord. There's two cup holders. I'm sure you guys the key fob is the same key. Unfortunately, it does not get the newer key like the Honda Civic. There's a lock, unlock, a remote start, and a panic button. Same nice key, that's really, really nice to hold in your hands. Putting the vehicle into reverse, this basically push in on the R. It does show you a backup camera. Unfortunately, there's no top-down 360 view, but there's trajectory with distance markers. And this does have a real cross traffic alert, so this vehicle will put the brakes on for you. To go into neutral, just press that button to go into drive. Press there, and to go into sport, you press it again. And this is for the drive mode selector. This does have all-wheel drive, like I mentioned. It does show you normal, snow, mud, and sand. So basically, it will appropriate that power to what, what will needs the actual traction. There's an automatic start-stop button here. And to put the vehicle back into park, just press the P button there. Open up this, it does reveal a deep amount of storage, and you can slide this area here back and forth if you would like. Me personally, I actually like this material here that Honda used here on the actual center console. You get the same material that's in the actual Pilot. And there's this uh, steel-like material here on the actual dashboard. It looks really nice. Open up the glove compartment. It does reveal a deep amount of storage in there. And above me, there's just this standard size sunroof. Unfortunately, Honda does not offer a panoramic sunroof. There's your sunglass holder here. Also, this convex mirror. So just like the Pilot, and there's also LED lights in the front. Unfortunately, you get incandescent lights in the actual rear. The seats up here do feel very nice and comfortable. We'll talk about the back seat comfort in a few seconds. And you can adjust this armrest here if you would like. So if you're trying to grab the steering wheel at a really good position, you can definitely do it. There is paddle shifters here. There's your adaptive cruise control here with lane keeping assist. Over here's your volume and voice control. And there is a heated steering wheel function off to the side. And this is how you turn the volume up and down. But overall, the Ridgeline does feel very spacious. But let's hop into the back seat of the Honda Ridgeline. Getting into the back seat here of the Honda Ridgeline, open up the door here. The door opens at a really good angle, but getting back here, as you guys can see there, I did get into this vehicle really good. So it does have a really good step in height. I'm only five foot eight. I do have a good amount of headroom here, but looking down here, Honda says you get around 36.7 inches of legroom. This is where I have the seat to drive. I have plenty of foot space underneath the driver's seat. There is two map pockets back here for storage. There's rear air vents. There is two USB ports down there, a little bit of storage here. And you can lift these seats up if you want to have a flat low floor. And pulling this armrest down here, it does reveal two cup holders with a little bit of storage. And it does feel very padded as well. There is incandescent lighting throughout the cabin. And you can open up this rear glass if you like. And unfortunately, Honda does not offer a panoramic sunroof option, but you can get this standard size sunroof if you would like. The materials here on the door panel are gonna be a pretty decent material. It's gonna be nice and padded here. I like the nice stitching here. The switch gear feels really nice. There is this chrome accented door handle with a little bit of storage and cup holder space. But overall, the back seat of the Ridgeline does feel very comparable to everything else in this segment. Let's talk about the powertrain specs here for the Honda Ridgeline. This uses Honda's 3.5 liter V6. It's a single head over cam. It does make 280 horsepower and 262 pound feet of torque. It's paired with a nine speed automatic transmission. And Honda says this can tow up to 5,000 pounds properly equipped. Fuel economy is rated at 18 in the city, 24 on the highway and 21 combined. It's been a couple of months since I drove the Ridgeline here. This has Honda's 3.5 liter V6. It's a single head over cam. This makes 280 horsepower and 262 pound feet of torque. It is hooked up to a nine speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy for this V6 is rated at 18 in the city, 24 on the highway. But it does get decent fuel economy. You also have an eco mode here, just in case you guys try to basically drive really conservatively. But since this does have all wheel drive, the all-wheel drive system does a really good job. Honestly, I thought I was gonna trip out the front tires, but just driving the Ridgeline here, you have a good commanding view of the road. The powertrain is very silky, it's very smooth. This nine speed, it doesn't feel like it's hunting for gears. You also have these really good side mirrors here. This does have rear cross traffic alert, blind spot monitoring, four closure warning, also with adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist. So really good driver's assistance here from Honda. And just driving the ridge line, the cabin here is quiet. I don't even hear no wind from outside. You have some really nice materials in here. Um, there is Apple CarPlay in Android Auto and above you, there's just this standard size sunroof, but <laughs> it does a really good job of downshifting, but I do have the car in it's eco mode. So it's basically kind of like limiting the throttle here. Let's put it into a sport mode here. Not just trying to roast the front tires. <laughs> okay, let's use the paddles here to see how the responses are. That's second gear. 
Oof. The paddles are very responsive. This thing drives fantastic. Like I mentioned, very silky and smooth V6. But honestly, I have no complaints for the Ridgeline. The Ridgeline is a very unique, quote unquote, pickup truck in the segment. It has It's the only truck in the segment to have a party trick for the tailgate. You have to go for a bigger truck if you want to have those features. This has a multi-tailgate as well. No other competitor in this segment offers that multi-tailgate function or even a barn open door function. Like I mentioned, you have to go for the bigger trucks if you guys want those features. But just driving the Ridgeline, like I mentioned, very good powertrain, decent fuel economy. And that V6 just loves to roar. roar. <laughs> and it gets up to speed really quick. So if you guys are looking for a really peppy V6 and you want a reliable truck, the Honda Ridgeline is a really good option in the segment. Starting price here for the Honda Ridgeline RTLE is at $42,820. This one stickers for $47,035. Hope you guys have enjoyed this review here. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Drive One Reviews and hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you all in the next review.